hey guys and welcome to another day of overwatches in this video i've got three overwatches for you in this first one you can see that this guy had some really nice stats 22 kills around 146 damage around and averaged 86 percent headshot percentage in the first half as you can see the first shot i get to see is pretty impressive before he rotates over to b where he hits another pretty impressive flick shot the next round he pushes up from long a and flanks them in b tunnels here he holds the flank and manages to take down the bomb carrier and the rest of the team with some pretty impressive reaction time shots. Now while his reaction time does seem to be quite impressive, almost bordering upon wall hacks, he does seem to get caught off guard in certain situations while still hitting the shots. It's these sort of things that lead me to believe that this guy actually might just be a really skilled individual. Throughout the game, he consistently got his picks and didn't do anything overly impressive with the exception of this nice little deagle round at the end. Still though, it didn't seem to be anything that looked shady to me, so at the end of the day I had to say aim assistance insufficient, vision assistance insufficient, other external assistance insufficient, and griefing insufficient. This leads us to our next game, which as it has it is also on Cobble. At first I even wondered if it was the same guy but just on the first half, but after watching it for a little bit it was clear that it wasn't. As he took the B site his kills seemed pretty standard, nothing out of the ordinary. After watching the Overwatch previous to this one, this guy just felt a little bit underwhelming. He just did not seem to have the raw talent the guy before him did. He also lacked consistency in his shot, and he didn't seem overly observant as to where people were going to be. Now this shot right here through the grenade debris was probably this guy's most suspicious activity. Things started to pick up on the next half with a beautiful pistol round. Which leads us to the final round. Still though, at the end of the day, I can't say that there was enough evidence to convict him of anything. This leads us to our final game. And, well, this doesn't look very suspicious at all, does it? Yes, your eyes aren't deceiving you. As you had probably already guessed, we have a spin butter on our hands. But before we go and report this guy, let's see if there's anything else interesting that happens this game. As you can see here by the scores, it looks like someone on the other team may have been cheating as well, and that might have been why this guy decided to toggle his hacks on. Now while hacker vs hacker might not be very abnormal on this channel, there was something that resulted because of it that I thought was quite fascinating. Here you can see that the spin botter comes out middle and seems to take out the entire CT team. Meanwhile, one CT manages to go around and it also happens to be the one guy that might be cheating on the CT team all the way to the squeaky door and then eventually come around into sight and ninja defuse the bomb. So that leads us to this. What do you guys think? Aim assistance? Well, he's a spin botter, so evident. Vision assistance? Evident. External assistance? Well, he is a spin botter, so evident for that one as well. But I did not see him doing any griefing, so at least he has that on his plate. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed.